Okay, bird, tell us your joke. Why don't birds drink wine? Sticky beak, get it? On the next episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. Um, you know, I've been sitting on, since the move, I've been sitting on uh, a couple samples that, that have come to my house and I've, I've had for a while. I just haven't had a chance to jump into them. But now I do, and so I thought today would be kind of a fun day. Um, you know, the, the last uh, video I posted, uh, Mr. Jones was asking for more birds. So I was thinking about the bird, and I was thinking I do have this sample right here called Sticky Beak. So I thought that maybe there was a connection there. Uh, this is the 2011 Sticky Beak Toscana. So this is a Super Tuscan uh, IGT. Indicazione Geografia, Geografica Tipica. So, I mean, this is uh, uh, just one of a couple different classifications that could show up in uh, Italy, in wines from Italy. The idea with the Super Tuscan is, you know, although they, they've got that Sangiovese everywhere, it's kind of nice to blend in other grapes that aren't necessarily traditionally Italian. So this is going to be 85% uh, Sangiovese, 10% Merlot, and 5% Syrah. This is rolling in at uh, $20 suggested retail price, and this is imported and distributed by Old Bridge Cellars, and they're the ones that got me this sample, so thank you so much, uh, Old Bridge Cellars from uh, Napa. Now, the story behind Sticky Beak, and you're going to see I do have another wine of theirs uh, that will taste for you in, in a week or so, um, that is a Russian River Valley Sauvignon Blanc, and you're trying to figure out what the connection is here. The idea with Sticky Beak is that uh, Sticky Beak is kind of a, a term that's used in Australia that means... You know, it's somebody who's kind of sticking their nose into other people's business. Uh, and so what these guys are doing is they're really focusing on, you know, what's going on in all these amazing regions all over the world. They're sticking their nose into it and, uh, and they're seeing what they can find. So this one is just straight up uh, grown and, and bottled in Italy. Uh, the winemaker is, I, I know I got this somewhere. The, the winemaker is uh, Alberto Antonini. Uh, and so, you know, I thought it'd be nice to kind of see what uh, Alberto was doing and uh, what's happening in uh, Tuscany right now. You know, color-wise, um, I'm getting like a nice kind of a, uh, a I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking in my head right here, rusty red, and I know oftentimes when we think about um, reds being rusty or bricky uh, in nature, we think about some older wines. I mean, I know this is a 2011, um, but it is kind of that more like a, a dull type of red, not this really deep uh, ruby that we often see in our red wines here. Um, so, you know, a, a nice color. On the nose, I mean, a couple different things going on here. I am getting like a, a cherry type of aroma as far as the fruit on the nose. I am getting like an earthy, uh, soily, dirty uh, type of play that, that oftentimes we would find in an old world wine. So the wines of Italy and France and, and all over, you know, way back yonder. Um, definitely some, some notes on the nose that, that we should be noticing. Yeah, really, there's this, like, bright cherry and almost like a, like a cherry menthol type of thing. So, I mean, in a sense, it's almost like this kind of cough syrup uh, type of play, but cough syrup that you want to taste, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, cough syrup you want to taste. Yeah, this nice good menthol, there's a nice little, like, eucalyptus thing happening. It's, it's, it's intriguing. Let's try it on the palate here.
Wow. As we often get with um, these wines from Italy, right? We're talking about food friendly, good acidity, good earthy notes, a, a food pairing wine. And I know some folks think that, you know, by talking about a food pairing wine, it's almost like a comp cop out, like, like it wouldn't be fine by itself. This wine is great by itself. And, and, um, you know, I'm enjoying it right now. Just after that first sip, um, I'm saying that this is something that, that I'm really liking quite a bit, but I can see how this could go with your more rustic Italian fare. You know, I know that $20 is kind of on the higher end of, of what you'd be going into as far as like a weeknight type of wine. Um, but I see this going well with like your uh, your grilled pizza. I th see it going well with your pasta. I see it going well with your barbecue, uh, things of this nature. Um, I think it's a welcome alternative um, to, to, uh, to, you know, normally you would pair like a, a Zinfandel with these types of foods that I'm thinking about. This is your Zinfandel alternative right here. Um, kind of a, 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 a down home, dirtier, more rustic, uh, kind of play. Um, I would say, and I am kind of thinking about Zinfandel. I want to take another sip here because there was something that reminded me of Zinfandel as well. It's reminding me of Zinfandel in two different ways. In one way, it's reminding me of those, everything that's right with those really good um, reserved kind of single vineyard um, uh, uh, Zinfandels that often you find at like, you know, these Bay Area urban wineries that kind of focus on just going out to all these individual uh, vineyards and, and seeing how that Zinfandel is looking, uh, one vineyard right next to the other. Um, everything that's going right with those very um, reserved, um, classic, uh, herbaceous type of Zins. But it does bring that one note that kind of turns people off to uh, Zinfandels. It does have a very hot, like high alcohol type of play to it. Um, it does have, you know, uh, behind those earthy, soily type of notes, there is, you know, this super bright cherry fruit acidity um, that could be a little bit overwhelming to some. You know, it's weird. I'm noticing it now as almost like a secondary type of flavor. So it's not like this classic fruit balm over the topness from the get go. Um, but there are those, those big fruit, high alcohol characteristics that are kind of showing up as well. And, and what's interesting, you know, I'm looking at the alcohol percentage right now. It's 13%, right? Which is, is rather, you know, on the lower end of, of um, you know, red wines in general. Um, and so it is a little bit, there's a little concern there when the alcohol is making itself um, that well known um, on such a low percentage alcohol wine. Um, but this is... It's, it's just straight up tasty, and I think that there's so many other, you know, secondary and tertiary flavors that are going to draw your, um, your, going to draw your palate away from uh, that high alcohol sense that I'm getting. You know, uh, as I'm talking about this, I'm also getting like these smoked meats and, and peppery type of notes, and, and honestly, um, for a, a, a $20 Super Tuscan, um, that's that's really rocking and being being pure to uh, the Sangiovesian roots. Um, you know, I think the Merlot and the Syrah are really bringing um, some nice flavors along with it. Um, I really am enjoying this wine, and, and I do recommend that you try it. Uh, I, I'm throwing it in that that. 87 plus 88 point range um, and it's definitely something worth seeking out um, so if you can get your mitts on this um, why don't you try 
uh, checking them out. Um, you know, look up uh, oldbridgesellers.com. Uh, look up Sticky Beak online. I'll probably post a link below. Um, and, and try them and see what you think. Leave a message below. Let me know what you're up to. Uh, I also did want to remind you I am still giving away free wine uh, on this site from the folks from the underground cellar. Take a look at the last post and that's gonna give you instructions on how to get in while the getting is good. Until next time, everybody. Stay rad. Stay rad.